Hi everyone. Uh, in this lecture, we'll discuss about the output resistance of a common gate amplifier. So first, I'll start with a very simple case. That's when lambda equal to zero. And then, uh, so if I wiggle the output node, if let's say I apply a voltage at the output node, we, need, we are interested in finding what is the current drawn from the output node. And the ratio of the voltage, let me call it this voltage as Vx and this current as Ix. Ratio of Vx by Ix is, is will be your output resistance. So again, when you're trying to find the output resistance, you should make the independent input voltage source to go to zero because you know you're trying to measure what is the effect uh, when what is the change in the current when you're actually changing the output node voltage. So you have to ensure that every other source, the, the independent source present in the circuit should be made to go to zero because the current you are measuring at the output should be solely due to the voltage you are applying at the output. Okay, so if you have an input source, we, which we discussed already, that's going to affect the current that is present at the output, so which we don't want. Okay, therefore, uh, we'll again, we'll have to short the input source. So first, we'll go for the simplest case when lambda is zero, in that case, R0 is infinity. So when R0 is infinity, so here we are analyzing with a finite source resistance. And uh, even though you change the drain node voltage, so there will be no change in the current. Okay, because there is no relation, there is nothing to connect the output and input. Okay, so source voltage will remain where it was before. And even though you keep changing the drain voltage, since there is no R0, okay, so that's not going to, uh, I mean, there is, go, there is going to be no current in the circuit. So your R out will be infinity. So for a finite voltage, you are going to draw a zero current. So the R out will be the ratio of Vx by X, which will be infinity. So this is when lambda is zero. So the moment you introduce a finite R naught, then when you apply a voltage, when we apply a voltage Vx here, a part of the voltage is being fed back to this node which in turn generates because this is a low impedance node and as soon as you a voltage is applied at this node which is, it's going to generate a current of value gmva in this direction okay so that current uh, will start flowing and also you should see that there is a direct resistive path from r0 to rs okay so that will also there will, there will be some current because of that okay so to analyze this what we will do is we'll again first there are two different ways one is a brute force approach and the other one is an intuitive approach. So we'll follow both the approaches. Okay. So even though I'm using the word brute force, again, this is not a conventional approach. So as I as I said, the goal of the series of lectures is to give you some uncon unconventional approaches to the analysis of uh, CMOS circuits. So conventional approaches, you can find it in the standard textbooks, uh, Razavi and, you know, and also probably some very good lectures uh, by professors at IITM. Uh, so they're, they're, they're all some very good series for finding the conventional approaches of analysis of circuits. Okay, the goal of this series is to present some unconventional approaches, you know, I mean, as I said, there is nothing great about this. Uh, it's not some big invention. It's a very uh, slightly different way of looking at it for fun. That's it. So nothing serious. Now, we'll try to find what happens when I apply. So how do you find uh, the input resistance in this circuit? So the brute force method would involve trying to find what is the voltage across RS. We'll approach. We'll uh, we'll apply. Uh, we'll uh, take a similar route as we took in case of a uh, input resistance of a common gate amplifier. So we'll say that let I X be the current flowing here. Then just just I'm just using some intuition. The direction of the currents can be different. So the current will split here into two paths, and there is only two paths for the current. And finally, the same current will be coming here. So if I call this current as I I, which is current flowing through I S, the R S then we know ii equals ix. So all we need to do is just find the voltage at this node. Okay, so let's call that as vi, or let me call it vs, the voltage at this node, and divided by rs, then you'll get the current flowing through rs. That will be the same current as ix. So now when I apply a voltage vx here, so if you recall from the uh, previous lectures, when we were trying to find the reverse gain of a common gate amplifier, so what we will do right now is represent this part of the circuit as seen by RS by a Thevenin equivalent. Okay. 
by its equivalent thermal inequivalent. So if I apply a voltage Vx here, we know the voltage appearing at this node is going to be 1, oh sorry, Vx upon 1 plus Gm or not. Okay. And the thermal resistance seen here at this node, you'll have to short the Vx here. And that's going to be 1 by Gm parallel or not. Right, you are just looking into the source terminal. So when I apply, you will have current flowing through R naught, and there will be GMVI current. So it's one by GM parallel R naught. Again, uh, this sh shouldn't be. I mean, it's a pretty trivial thing. So that's why I didn't mention. So if you ground both source and drain, and apply some voltage at the source terminal, then the current flowing will be simply GMVX plus the current through R naught. Okay. So when you look uh, uh, said otherwise, it's often said in textbooks that when you look into the source terminal. When you're looking into the source terminal, the resistance seen is going to be 1 by gm approximately. It's normally 1 by gm parallel or not, or approximately 1 by gm. So same way, here in this case, the resistance seen by the MOSFET offers a resistance of 1 by gm and or not is already there. So resistance is 1 by gm parallel or not. This will eventually be connected to RS. So the current in this circuit is simply given by Vx upon 1 plus gm or not into 1 by Rs plus, so I'll write it as R0 by 1 plus Gm R0. Okay, so that will be the expression for, uh, so 1 by Gm parallel R0 is simply R0 by 1 plus Gm R0. So this will be your Ix because that's Is and that's same as Ix. So we are interested in finding Vx upon Ix. So you just rearrange the terms here, you will get 1 plus Gm R0 into Rs plus R0. So this is a very interesting result. So we'll just, uh, before we take a different approach to design to derive the same result, first let me just try to see if there is this, if this result makes an intuitive sense. So if, for example, Rs is zero, if there was no Rs, so this node is at ground, so the looking in at the drain terminal, if you look at the resistance, it's simply going to be R0, right? So since uh, source terminal is at zero, there is no current through the MOSFET. So the entire current will flow through the R0 to ground when, I, when you apply a voltage Vx here. So in this case, your R out is simply going to be equal to R0 when Rs is zero, okay? Now the presence of Rs is doing something different. The presence of Rs, if you see this intuitively, what is it doing is that, uh, again, I'll make one simple assumption that let's assume for the time being, your RS is much greater than or not. Okay. So that's the assumption we'll make here. So the reverse gain of this amplifier, if I'm applying a voltage Vx here, the voltage appearing here will approximately be 1 by 1 plus Gm or not into Vx. Okay, again, uh, if you assume RS is much greater than R0, your RS will also be much greater than 1 by G. So both these assumptions will uh, approximately this node. So that, that's almost like saying RS is very, very large. So you can treat it like an open circuit. So the voltage at this node, the source node is going to be simply Vx upon 1 plus Gm R0. Right, that's the reverse gain of the amplifier. So the current flowing through the resistor RS is simply this voltage divided by Rs, that will be your resistance. That will be the current. So that will be your Ix. So the resistance in this case is simply going to be 1 plus Gm R0 into Rs. So if you look at it, your Rs is now getting multiplied by 1 plus the intrinsic gain. Okay. So your output resistance actually depends upon the source resistance. So that's a very interesting factor, a very interesting uh, thing to note. So for example, in a common source configuration, even if you connect some finite RS here, the when I'm actually when, when I'm finding the input resistance, I'll be grounding this node and applying a node voltage Vx across this and trying to measure the current and try to measure this current. Now that is R out is going to be no matter what you connect at the source term, the gate terminal, that, that is the input terminal, your R out will always be R0. It is independent of RS. Okay, whereas in a common uh, in a common gate configuration, on the other hand, the moment you had an RS, the output resistance is a very strong function of the RS. 
So here I had assumed if your R0, I mean, if your RS is much greater than R0 and 1 by GM, the output resistance is simply a multiplied version, an amplified version of the source resistance. It gets multiplied by 1 plus A0. Okay. If RS is made to be 0, then it is simply equal to R0. What happens when R0 is infinity, RS is infinity? If RS is infinity, then we can see that this node is open. So the current here is going to be zero. So therefore the current drawn from the input voltage source will also be zero. So the input resistance is going to be infinity. No, sorry, the output resistance is going to be infinity when RS is zero. So now you can see it's a very strong function of the RS. So when your RS is zero, the output resistance was equal to R naught. And when RS is infinity, the output resistance is infinity as well. So in fact, it increases with the source resistance. So this is a very interesting property of common gate amplifier. So both the, if you, if you recall from the previous lectures, your R in the input resistance was actually a function of, a strong function of the load resistance. And now if you see here, the output resistance of the common gate amplifier is a very strong function of the source resistance, RS. Okay, and we derived the expression some time ago. The expression for the output resistance is actually R0 plus 1 plus GM R0 into RS. Okay, so this term R0 plus there is a multiplied version of the source resistance. Okay, so from this, if you look at this expression, when RS is 0, I'm plotting output resistance R out as a function of RS. When RS is 0, you're going to get R0. And after that, it's going to increase linearly as you increase your RS value. Eventually, when RS tends to infinity, your output resistance of a common gate amplifier will also tend to infinity. Okay, so that's it about the output resistance. And again, this is very, very important the output resistance of a common gate amplifier because this is something we'll encounter in uh, cascode amplifiers and very commonly encountered structure, you know, wherein you will have a common gate kind of a configuration uh, terminated by a source, finite source resistance will often encounter in uh, multi-stage amplifiers or in operational amplifiers. So now we'll go back and see if there is an intuitive way of deriving this result. So again, uh, we'll model R0 and RS here. So the intuitive way will be that I've applied a voltage BX here. Now, if you look at it, from this side, I'm trying to change the drain node voltage. So there won't be any current because of VX through the MOSFET from drain to source. Because of VX, because you know, drain terminal, if you wiggle drain, if you ignore R0, I'm just trying to just here, uh, R0 actually captures the early, I mean the channel length modulation effect. So if I separate out R0 from the MOSFET, then the MOSFET by in itself, even if I vary the drain voltage, then there will not be any change in the drain current, okay? So any change in the drain current will be because of the channel length modulation, which is modeled through R0. So there will be some current which is flowing through R0, through RS and then, okay. Now, if you look at this circuit, when the current enters here, whatever current is flowing, let, let's call that current as I, I, okay. Or yeah, let me call that as, this is the input, the current that is flowing at the input is IX. So let's call that current as I0. A fraction of the current is being fed back because you know this current comes here and it sees two parts here one is rs on the other side it sees a resistance of one by gm if you look into the source of a mosfet because i'm driving this drain with the voltage source the voltage source is held constant okay it's a constant voltage source the drain is held constant which means the drain potential is not changing so incremental resistance of the drain potential as seen by this current will be zero okay so the impedance when you look into this, uh, when you're looking into the source of a MOSFET, it will be 1 by GM. So that current splits and a part of it actually returns back. So now what happens, what happened previously was when RS was uh, infinity, okay, okay, I'll, I'll come to that a little later. So, but just, if you look at this, a part of the current is being fed back. So there is a current I0 which is flowing through R0 and there is a current which is being fed back, IFB. Okay, a part of it is being fed back. So since this is if uh, since this is always going to be greater than uh, you know this current is going to be smaller than I naught I naught minus IFB. So we can say that the input resistance will always be more than R naught. 
okay the output resistance will always be more than r naught so this is an intuitive way of looking at it so our goal is now to find what is the value of i naught and what fraction of it is being fed back so to find the value of i naught again we'll just use a very very simple approach so this is r naught and you have rs at this term at this terminal so i have applied a voltage vx here the current through r naught okay so we'll simply be if you apply voltage here the car the path for the current is through r naught then through rs and through gm okay so if i know the impedance at this node then that will be in series with r naught right so the impedance at this node is simply rs parallel 1 by gm right so that will be so the total current i naught which is flowing through r naught will simply be vx by r naught plus rs parallel 1 by gm is simply rs by 1 plus gm rs okay now this is the current i naught now what will be ifb now if you to compute ifb you should look at the mos structure again so this is rs the current i naught is entering this node i am not showing r naught here so r naught will let me show that as well so r naught is here it is connected to the input uh, the to the terminal vx here so there is a current i naught entering here it sees two paths on one side it sees rs on the other side it sees 1 by gm so we are interested in the current that's flowing through 1 by gm okay so that the current that is flowing through 1 by gm will simply be rs by rs plus 1 by gm so this is going to be gm rs by 1 plus gm rs okay this is uh, ifb so let me this is into i naught this will be equal to ifb will be gm rs by 1 plus gm rs into uh, gm rs by 1 plus gm rs into i naught so the we know what is the feedback current so your current ix which is the current drawn from the voltage source is simply i naught minus ifb which is going to be i naught by 1 plus gmrs and some time ago we derived i naught is simply vx so this is your ix upon 1 plus uh, there is this term 1 plus gmrs here already okay let me just write it later so we derived it which is rs r naught plus rs by 1 plus gmrs so this again i'm multiplying it with 1 plus gmrs so if you just re i mean rearrange these terms if you take vx upon ix which will be your r out and that's going to be equal to rs plus r naught into 1 plus gmrs again we can do a quick uh, rearrange rearranging of terms here and you will simply get r naught plus rs into 1 plus gmr naught okay so this is a very interesting uh, proof of this problem so by we have used feedback to see how what is the value of this uh, output resistance so again we'll intuitively see that so for example uh, if i connect r naught here and let's assume rs is zero if rs is zero what happens is that when you apply a voltage here no current flows through gm because this rs is so small so the entire current coming through r naught will fully flow through rs okay so nothing is fed back so the current will simply be i naught itself in this case i naught will be vx upon r naught and that will be equal to ix so your r out is simply going to be equal to r naught so similarly if i assume rs as infinity if i assume rs as infinity then when you assume rs as infinity uh, you are looking at the output or the output resistance since rs is infinity any current entering that through r naught will be fully fed back fully fed back so the moment it is fully fed back any current leaving that is flowing through r naught is the current that is drawn from vx will be zero so your r out is going to be infinity infinity when rs is infinity okay so because your entire current will be fed back whatever current is flowing through or not it will be fully fed back so the current effective current drawn from the supply which is vx will be zero 
the total current drawn will be zero. <laughs> okay, there is a current drawn by R naught, but that current is quickly being fed back by the MOSFET. So the total current drawn from the supply uh, from the voltage, the test voltage which we are applying to measure the output resistance, will be simply zero. Okay, so that's it about the intuitive way of looking at this uh, output resistance. Okay, output resistance of a common gate amplifier. So the output resistance of the common gate amplifier is simply R naught plus one plus GM R naught times RS. Okay, so if you see, if I so essentially if any resistance you add at the source it's going to get multiplied when you see at the drain for a common gate amplifier. Okay, so uh, that's it about common gate amplifier. Again, the, for you to think of a test setup to measure the output resistance, use the same setup that we have discussed earlier for uh, common gate configuration. So you can apply a bias resistor here, a large bias resistor and a big capacitor to create an AC ground. So this way you can fix the current you can do a current biasing of the circuit and it will work perfectly fine. So here to find the output resistance, uh, you can actually add uh, capacitively couple a source resistance here. So in this case, uh, since you are, uh, in fact, in this circuit, if your supply is sufficiently large, you don't even need to add a current source here. Uh, you can simply, because the current is already fixed, it's a current bias circuit. So you can directly add RS here, okay? So you don't even need to add a current source and add an RS here. So then uh, you can apply an AC current source of, of uh, one ampere magnitude and perform frequency response AC analysis around a small range of frequencies very close to uh, origin, okay, very close to DC uh, because at, at DC anyways, this capacitor is still behaves like an open circuit. So which is why if uh, you should choose the, if you choose the value of this capacitor large enough, then uh, uh, you can actually find at a frequency where the capacitance impedance here behaves like a short circuit okay and the circuit will start giving you a common gate behavior okay gate will be at ac ground so if you apply a one volt ac ampere uh, one volt uh, sorry one ampere ac current then the voltage at this node well, as we discussed in the previous lecture will directly give us the impedance at the output a z out of s and again, as, you, as I said, if you're trying to find, again, Z out of S will have poles and zeros and all that, but you can always find a range very close to origin, range of frequencies when it will be a flat function. So that will be your value of the output resistance. Or you can perform AC analysis at a single frequency where you know that this capacitor acts like a short circuit and you're going to see a purely real impedance. You, uh, since we are doing the low frequency analysis, output resistance analysis, your the best way is actually to find the phase of uh, if you're injecting a current here the voltage developed there should be in the say in phase almost in phase with the current so then you know that it's a purely resistive impedance okay and uh, then you can vary the load source resistance and uh, find the find the value of uh, the output resistance as a function of rs okay so as i said if you are uh, in this case your rs is actually going to dictate as i said if your supply voltage is sufficiently high you can do this you do this biasing otherwise if you want to decouple the problem and focus only on i mean you can choose any value of rs if you ac couple the resistance rs here okay this capacitor should be chosen large enough so that it acts almost like a short circuit at the frequency of interest where you're trying to find the output resistance okay so this will be a good setup that here now you can vary rs almost from zero to infinity okay so it doesn't matter previously it would have been difficult if anyway when you make rs very large if the depending on the current you'll also require a large voltage drop across it to keep it in uh, yeah to to actually i mean a voltage of voltage will develop across it once you force a certain current through it okay okay so uh, that's it about output resistance of a common gate amplifier if i missed anything i'll make a video in the uh, i make another video for output resistance